Howdy, 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 gang, and welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Thanks for joining me for the first episode of a brand new series, the classic Cthulhu case files, where each month I'm going to look at a vintage Call of Cthulhu adventure and share some adjustments and tweaks that you might want to make to bring these classic tales to your game table today. And we're going to get things off and running with a look at the first adventure from the Shadows of yogg Sothoth campaign. Yes, a true classic. So before we dive on in, I do want to mention the fine folks over at Chaosium Inc. were kind enough to provide me with a review copy of the classic Call of Cthulhu 2-inch box set which had a successful Kickstarter, and from where Shadows of yogg Sothoth originates. Yes, I wish I could say that this is the copy I bought in 1982. I ran in 1982, but that would not be the case. I have been running Call of Cthulhu for over 40 years. I have run this campaign back in the day, and do want to mention none of this is scripted. It's all off the cuff. Just having some fun talking about some classic Call of Cthulhu adventures and how you might approach bringing them to your game table today. All right, so should point out, this actually had a lot of firsts, and not only for Call of Cthulhu. Of course, it was the first supplement that was released after the one-inch core box set back in 1982. This is the first campaign for Call of Cthulhu. And to my knowledge, this is actually the first tabletop role-playing game campaign that was compiled in one volume. So we did have the G-series and D-series modules for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons against the Giants and the Drow series. But those were all published individually. They were all separate. This was the first time, to my knowledge, once again, that an entire campaign was in one book. Now, funny enough, there are seven chapters to this campaign, and they entail about 56 pages. So there is a lot packed inside. Should mention, over the years, Shadows of Yuxathoth has gotten a bad rap. And... There are some critiques that I completely agree with. There's some that I, I don't really. But there is a ton of gold that can be mined from these adventures. Plus, keep in mind, at the end of this campaign, the player characters go up against Cthulhu. So out of all the Call of Cthulhu adventures, all the Call of Cthulhu campaigns, the player characters will encounter Cthulhu at the end of this. So the premise of this campaign is the Hermetic Order of the Silver Twilight is a cult that is global, and they are working to raise the island of Rely and awaken Cthulhu and thus bring about the end of humanity, or humanity as we know it. So one of the knocks about this campaign is that the adventure hooks are very weak, especially the hook to get the player's involved in the campaign. And I completely agree. They are very, very weak. And I would actually approach this first chapter quite differently than it's presented. So the way it's written, the player characters become members of this exclusive lodge. Yes, the Hermetic Order of the Silver Twilight, which appears in other Call of Cthulhu adventures. So this is the first time we saw this. And the big bad actually makes a guest appearance in Masks of Nair Lothotep, which I always found to be pretty interesting. But the way this is presented is the player characters join this exclusive lodge and they make their way up through the ranks and they start discovering more and more about the true purpose of the Hermetic Order of the Silver Twilight. And then at some point, they're going to be suspicious and they're going to explore areas of the lodge that they have never been allowed into before. And they're going to learn more. And of course, they're 
going to encounter some sanity-shaking set pieces. And by the end of it, they're supposed to have destroyed, or at least think they've destroyed, the Hermetic Order of the Silver Twilight. Kind of ho-hum, to be honest. And the reality is, keep in mind, this was written in the early 1980s. So the design philosophy is far closer to what you would see in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons back then than what you would see from Chaosium Inc. for Call of Cthulhu who now. So this comes as a real shock to players who weren't around in 1982 or they weren't involved in role-playing games in 1982 because this has that same sort of, here's a location, here's a keyed map, here's what all those keys mean, you know, what's in that room, what's in that room, here are your NPCs, here are some monsters, and it's all kind of sandboxy where... There is no plot line to develop. You might have some NPC motivations, usually not real strong ones, but we have an overall gist of what's going on that, yes, we know that at some point the player characters are going to learn that the Hermetic Order of the Silver Twilight is not benevolent at all. So what I would do if I were going to be using this campaign, is I would actually have the player characters play a beginning adventure. Like The Haunting or The Haunted House. What, whatever edition you've got, you know the adventure. The Corbett House is what I'm talking about. I would, I would run something like that. Maybe do another adventure after that. And have the player characters come to the notice of the... Hermetic Order of the Silver Twilight, who contacts them. Now, this is supposed to be an exclusive lodge. It's male only, and it's for, like, the upper crust and the movers and shakers and people with money. And that doesn't necessarily apply to all kinds of Call of Cthulhu investigators. So what I would kind of look to do is where the Order is looking to bring the player characters on board make them part of the lodge, but also have them kind of be like their boots on the ground. To have them be like the patron of the player characters for a few adventures where the player characters think they're doing good, right? That they're, they're going out there and they're acquiring occult objects and things like that to keep them out of the hands of nefarious organizations where it really turns out the most nefarious organization is the Hermetic Order of the Silver Twilight. So that's what I would look to do. I think that would play out really, really well. Now, there is an NPC that could be used to kind of uh, steer the player characters into being suspicious. There's also a disappearance of one of the Lodge members that kind of ties into that as well. I would probably use those also. And that is how I would approach this first adventure in the Shadows of Yog Sothoth campaign. Now, there's a cool magic item that the player characters get, the box. I like it. I've always liked it. I've always thought it was pretty cool. Uh, one aspect of this campaign that I think is overdone is how many things are lifted from a variety of H.P. Lovecraft stories and kind of dropped into this campaign. Some of them I would kind of trim out, not necessarily in this first adventure, though, a little, little further on down. Also, uh, another knock against this campaign is that there's so much of the motivation of the player characters comes about by way of correspondence and letters. And I would certainly look to foreshadow some of the later adventures of the campaign early on so that it's not always, oh, you guys got a letter from this person asking you to investigate this or somebody's contacted you and uh, somebody's missing. Could you check that out? Kind of, kind of make it a little more organic, 
Although the reality is there are a ton of Call of Cthulhu adventures that begin with a telegraph or a letter, and that's just fine. All right. So next up in our next video, we are going to take a look to the future with the second part of the Shadows of Yog sothoth campaign, whereas the player characters have probably burnt the lodge to the ground, at least that's what my players did way back in the day, and the player characters find themselves now going to New York to explore this mysterious business organization which is bleeding businessmen dry of not only money, but their pow as well. All right, that is it for the first episode of the classic Cthulhu Case Files. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you do subscribe, ding that bell, because it'll not only let you know when I upload standalone videos, such as this, but also inform you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Central, right here on YouTube. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more that you won't find here on the YouTube channel. Till I see you next time, here's hoping each and every one of you enjoys plenty of great gaming with your gang. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, that's okay. You don't have to leave just yet. In fact, why don't you subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel right here or take a peek at the latest live stream or even find out what YouTube recommends you check out from the channel. And of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks again for watching.